I've got loads of gifts to open. I've been opening them, as you see, mindlessly. I've got some new 12-year Scotch whiskey that I quite like. This is Peppery, Aberfeldy. Let's compare both of them. <laughs> the shield. Just standing there like a lemon, like... <laughs> this man is the most... Technically, producer, the public image question is not in the contract as our job is to really make sure that the project will deliver in terms of time and the cost. But the streaming, building relationships with the community is uh, a special and camera thing we're not meant to be doing. The question is... Will I be doing the more communication than Logan? Should I do less, just be back and push the teams forward? It's a little bit of a different way of conceiving of the um, job role. So there were all these questions here that made it not evident to take over, evident to take over the project. And the last point that is quite interesting, I'm in the middle of it, the transition into Unity, the transition into this project. There was also this question of, uh, it's a big challenge, it's a big project. It's one where we could be less productive or even more productive than before. You can see with the true fair, we weren't able to deliver everything all at once. It took some time. So the fact of having uh, activities coming out in November is a bit too difficult. Uh, drop by drop, the true fair, which is the biggest thing that is happening two weeks after November. Yeah. So we are on a timing that is quite complicated and complex on the project. Because we can't say this is not a normal transition of, you know what I mean? It's not, we don't know what we are doing on the next two years. With Unity, everything becomes possible. There's too much to squeeze, but not everything is so evident to bring to you. So there's still a lot to do. So he's saying you've arrived and you found this lot of things to do and it gave you a big pressure hit. Of course it does give you pressure. It's a game, and from my side and the team, it's a game that I've loved, I've adored it. I've been playing for so long ago, I'm less so now. But this aura that the game has, the love that the community has, is something that animates all of us. And there's also this pressure to take all of this and honor the heritage of all of this. Since this uh, transition, what is a typical day in the life of you? For now, they don't resemble each other. Uh, he's talking about the beta. For now, uh, for recently, it has been nothing but reading forum posts, all your feedback. Ch checking YouTube, checking streams, getting as much feedback as possible from the community. Um, and on the basis of which, as you can see, during the beta, we had to react very rapidly on what people have been saying, which was the case on interfaces, UI, UX. So at that point, a typical day was absorbing as much uh, feedback from the community and distribute it to the right people in the team and make sure that they act on it. Whereas the most classical sort of team uh, day that I have normally before the beta was released was to do a sort of uh, vague turn, all teams go around and see how they're progressing, how they're doing, is everything progressing nicely. Uh, let's, let me give you an example because we're talking about Unity right now. The game designers right now had some rubbish PCs because they were running on Flash. So they did not need powerful PCs up to now. So I had to make some changes. Some were, t were uh, handling the Gladiator troll and I asked them if you can test it. They were like, no, we can't. If you try my PC, it's just overheated. It's useless. <laughs> Lani said, this is nuts. What the fuck? He said, it's logical. Of course it is logical. Uh, for Flash, you did not need graphical cards at all for Flash. Whereas now in Unity, if you have in uh, a graphics card, if you have a 960 very old graphics card, it's not very good. He's asking, are these 
private computers or internal PCs? No, 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 no. These are company computers. And it is the case for uh, testing, for the convention and things like that. These are things that evolve over time. But these are things for me that I'm more attentive to, that I'm trying to pay more attention to. He's finding this nuts to a game company that needs to upgrade its entire PC assets for one update, which is nuts. For me, company games, they have the best of the best anyway, what? <laughs> it depends on the game and the typology of each one. Uh, if you're running on Flash in two dimension, the, the side of having a graphics card and things like that is overkill, but too overkill. But if you have a company you don't want to spend hundreds of thousands of euros upgrading PCs because there's always the question of budgeting, managing money, and up until today, uh, lesser powerful computer were good now. Grass or thanks to uh, Flash, but now because of Unity, we're having to upgrade our entire fleet. And he's saying, well, that you've had to make some savings in the past because you didn't upgrade all these years. And he said, yes, we had to wipe our bank accounts for this upgrade. He said, now we're having uh, lesser, heavier questions. We've asked, what is the feature that you're the most proud that you've worked on, that you're most proud of on the office? The feature that I'm the most proud of is thinking. The formula that I've managed to successfully find with Jola was really cool for Temporis 2 or 3. There was an entire system that works really well for between the invasions, the levels to retrograde, the fusion of items. These are all things that we've talked fairly enough. Uh, we called it the Temporish Gacha. These were mechanics that were borrowed from other games like Star Raid and things like that. Uh, The formula that we've put uh, in Temporis Retro was so good that we've kept it and we've had the best retention ever uh, in a Temporis. We had this problematic of fusing servers and the problem was the main server was so full that we've had to add new ones in order to... Uh, because the main server was overloaded. And we've had a lot of reactivity in the sense of um, Temporis Retro. Uh, people had re-rolled a lot and created new characters. So in a couple of weeks, we developed the idea of quickly having times 2 XP on re-rolled characters. And he's saying there are also some classes which were way ahead of other classes in Temporis Retro 3. And there was a feeling of frustration necessarily. Essentially, it was due to many things. Uh, classes the moment you got you the moment you saw a class in a fight you wanted it Echo flip nobody played it at the beginning but the moment anybody saw it they wanted to play it and also the the gear once you keep it and you upgrade it the moment you created the new character level 20 you had gear level 3 so you could just expl explode your progression very quickly and you had golden larva and things like that so you farmed very quickly and there was this thing this re the reroll mechanic was so encouraged that uh, we loved keeping it as part of the addition. It wasn't my preferred Temporis 3. The Retro Temporis uh, stay and remain my favorites. Between Retro 1 and Retro 2. Uh, this, the problem with Retro 2, we have internally, we have some PTSDs from uh, that. Yeah, the uh, postponing for an entire week of the deployment of that one. The announce, that announce in particular, I received a me direct message from Logan. And he's saying, this is a complete clusterfuck. We need to postpone this, we can't. And then he arrived at the announcement with shaking knees. And he's saying the uh, returns and feedback from the community were completely terrible and bad. Uh, as I've said during the beta, there was some feedback uh, turbulent feedback. You have to uh, have sufficient back um, 
distance because there's a lot of people that play the game and a lot of people have lots of expectations and have high passion so you really have to be solid and do solid work to not get slammed every time i was talking uh, with somebody else about this the mental fortitude required to handle all of these events uh, the feedback from the community and stuff like that some people will go to extreme lengths to find information about you to use against you in insults and stuff like that i don't want to get into this but we did have a lot of things in Ankama historically to do with these kind of things but generally speaking game videos in general it's a terrible anecdote but i know the activision for example every call off every call off release they put they put process of psychological follow-up in some teams after the release because the team just gets pounded so hard we're there we're nearing that level of vitriol uh, would you say it's similar at the, every temporis release no 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 it's not the same <laughs> the role of producer which i am is to take this in charge this aspect so talking about it and stuff like that and i operate that at the level of uh, the release of updates and um, temporises for example that one which was really complex every week we had to balance every week we had to um, do an update necessarily the update that we wanted to bring two to three months the teams were so pounded so hard hit that i can't tell them to go and add three dungeons this week so let's let's calm things down let's push this to later let's reshuffle so i'm playing also a a role of balancing team morale release and things like that and it's one of the hardest parts of my job but it's one of the most gratifying ones once the teams are so responsive to this yeah it's so cool so cool thank you for that a question that we have right now for the phase two of uh, i've seen this asked multiple times in the chat with the true fire are you and the team are you confident about the conf are you confident in the release of unity in december you and team yes 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 i'm so confident i realize we're cognizant of the fact that there's still a lot of work to do a lot of things to bring before we release a good game but we're not changing the date if we compare changing dates is not happening we, but if we compare the release of the beta one month ago and what we have now under our hands there's our day and night difference there's a lot of things that progress uh, but there's still a lot to correct uh in one month of work between your feedback we've enhanced the client and bettered it so much in just this little little time but there's globally a lot of things to do but we know that we have three months to do it we've seen what we've done in a month we're confident that there's a lot we can do in those next three months and the worry that we have that we talk a lot about internally is uh, at the level of retakes so events and things that we have to go over to redo like uh, interfaces i don't know if you have questions later on about interfaces and it's like oh don't even yeah don't worry about it <laughs> yeah typically uh, this kind of elements I'm more than willing and motivated to work on these things but they still are big risks to take than redo integrations of interfaces uh, while we're better in everything else it's uh, it's big risk before December to do something like that while we're still better in so we're thinking about how to do this intelligently with the team so that in December we have a good viable beautiful product to release and then from the first update from the beginning of the year 2025 we can think about what can we bring you what can we enhance what can we better on the project so we can bring ultimately the project that you dreamed of and envision in your head later on so globally, you are the leader of pretty much most of the team. I don't know if you have a decisive role about which update uh, happens, but what is your global vision for the game? So globally, for updates as they are done at Ankama, this is viable at the same thing for Wakfu, every product owned by Ankama. There's a common agreement where we pr present things to the direction, taught and camp. This is the direction we want to take with the game. This is next year, maybe two, three years, if we can project ourselves that far. And there's a common agreement. This update, yes, it's cool, but please add this because we've added this animation side or the story 
this is the trans media that we've seen you talk about Joe. yeah this is the dna of ankama so we have the dna of ankama is still anchored deeply into the cross trans media thing so for example the uh, wakfu number three it allowed us to fly a lot around all the others uh the uh, season four the release of it allowed us to release many more things trans media style so wakfu and other thing so it's it boils down to common agreement with the direction and uh, trying to find a good update that works for everyone not just for dofus itself so in that sense me for me my vision globally is there's many topics from one side i would really like really 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 like and i've talked to this uh about this with the team i want to bring massive content to be dilu diluted over time for example pvm content but with chapter one two and three potentially style frigo style me myself the biggest nostalgia that i've had is when i've had my uh, chance sacri and now i was waiting for frigos two releases or frigos two arrived and then i was like Wah! one of the first teams to do cb and that was banger banger and a lot of people find themselves in this sort of way of thinking and this what i think is a good way of thematizing years um you we have lots of expectations it's cool to project ourselves in the future um and also, this is a big challenge if you think about it. There's some things that we need to do, purely technical uh, updates in the background to allow us to do things like that and bring them uh, And one of the most risky aspects of all of this, if we do purely technical um, updates for the production and the project itself, it's for players, you. No, you can't see it. You don't benefit from these updates. So for me, the ideal is to alternate technical and content technical update content and have a rhythm like that staccato one one even i must admit that i'm so looking forward to the big extension because as a pvm player since 2022 i can already see the lack of content yes and the 2222 content was cool but it was very quickly digested and it's gone yeah very very quickly digested first question a bit tricky it's someone that asked it during the lives every question when you're doing and come alive papino you know, the pope you answer that it's not your priority i imagine when they when they give you questions about revamps of this or revamps of that what are your priorities then <laughs> right now the absolute number one uh, priority is unity and when i say unity i mean the porting that is underway so you have this idea in your hand the graph side, we've just done the true fair, which was the promise of the year, but it's also the three character designs that we've had, they've worked on it, but the revamp that we want to do on classes to go more towards what you expect, this is pure character design. So we've had to produce very quickly for the true fair, but that means we've had to reduce from our priority towards unity and then go and do some uh, good character true. Yeah. And here, in fact, 100% of our teams, we have some teams that are 100% on Unity to make sure that the porting is good when we happen. So technical updates and things like that. And this is why phase two lasts for a month, so that the porting, the temporary porting, cosmetic, gear, all these technical changes that we've added, the migration of data and stuff, it's, it's a massive project. But the biggest, biggest priority it really is unity december we press release on it and that it's so smooth so good no problems and the quality that you guys expect and we have good feedback from you guys about character design item design uh we started to take some we've only showed you like five or six but they will continue to arrive uh, so it's in this sense right here that we will do the interfaces afterwards so this is the biggest priority right now to answer so globally, 2025, the biggest priority, uh, quarter one, or maybe up until uh, the first half of the year, is to secure this version. And just finish all those polishes that we couldn't do because of the beta, or was, we had too much to do. But we want to give you the best game that we can by the end of the first half of uh, 2025. 
and I really, really, really hope that 2025, I want to release something that is as strong as the beta that you have, but I want to do complete graphic revamps by March or April, for example. Uh, so, uh, yes, PVM people won't be happy because this is a big update, but that offers you no new content, but overall, the project is release it good, and then break everything that is annoying for us, solve all the big problems, and then from the second half of 2025, then crazy PVM content and bring us some good stuff. Shit. Add. No. A uh, big uh, PVM addition. That's good. We finished the first part. Sorry guys, ads are part of life. We can wait a little bit, but yeah. We've done the first big part, which talks about you and Kama and everything. I will ask you the questions that we cannot avoid, the bots, the biggest question that we cannot avoid, you know it, uh, whether, will Unity have a, an efficacious solution against bots, it changes nothing for bots, there are things that will change massively, first of all is the reactivity that we will have inside, between client side, server side, flash, was a real maze that you had to navigate. Uh, when it comes to Unity, we will use solutions that is more widespread, technology-wise, which means there will be solutions that exist out there that we can just take and borrow for Unity, but not specifically for Dofus. So, we will have an update of their bots that will arrive uh, from potentially the very first few weeks and months. However, the first advantage that we will have going to Unity and have immediately some tens of developers that are uh, well versed in it is, uh, you can't see it now, but we've started putting stuff on the beta because you don't care as much about it to do anti-bot uh, fights during the beta. Uh, because if they can already start detecting how we're organizing ourselves and this and that, they can get ahead of that for December. And uh, he's saying, we didn't see many in the beta anyway. He's saying, uh, uh, Papino speaking, saying, now what you have noticed, the, the bots that you can notice in the beta or the stupidest one or the moving one, click on resources, click on mobs. For now, bots are not really invested in the beta. But for December, honestly, we have beautiful things in place. And we will see if it is quite effective or not. But globally, on this level, it will be... Um, when it comes to cheating, cheats, multi-account on mono account, this is still a complex topic that we're thinking about. Unity brings better solutions to fight stuff like that. But we still have to test it before I can tell you whether it will be effective or not. It will be complicated. I don't want to give you any false promises right now. There's a number... There's less number of people that uh, cheat on a better than on uh, a uh, live server. He's looking at chat and he's saying, hold on, hold on, hold on. It is already when a bot simulates the fact of clicking on a button and logging in and getting into the game to do a detection on this already is complex. I ha you have to tell yourself having access to the game on every game is really complicated. Whereas where the bot have complex uh, operations be 24 hours in the game and not be detected that is that is way harder to put in place in Unity and it's something that will be way easier on our side to counter but in reality there's there's a vast different types of bots that can move and do various things so it's really complex to detect essentially because at the point where you're simulating basic stuff it's really hard to detect we can't really we can't check every connection and ask them to do a capture and do mini games before they log in to see if they're a bot or not there are limits to what we can really to how far we can push it 
one of the ways to shoot yourself in the foot is to add a captcha for logging in. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that we forget is in the anti-bot fight, I've talked about this during the retro and it's still val viable for everything. One of the biggest parts of, of the gameplay of Dofus for professions is a bot gameplay. We're just asking you to move on a cell, click it, regardless of how easy it is and stupid to just r simulate that on a bot level. So easy. Where is... The thing to differentiate you between bots, just to tell you, as a basic idea, the way that we ask you to interact in level professions has not changed since 2006, 2007, and it is the closest thing to bot behavior that players do on a daily basis. So it is a direction that game design has taken in the back, back then, it is how it is. Um, talking about MMOR MMORPGs, we confound a lot, one MMORPG can stop black desert for example stopped trades there is no monetary change you have to go through uh, uh, markets and there you can put orders to buy sell but money size it's so because you can have lots of gold selling on games like this whereas in dofus and wakfu there's still an Eco economy that is ultra capitalist you can do whatever you want you fix the price you want you make the trades you want uh, on the base of it, the game is so designed for that gold selling is so open. And I don't want to say that Fedofus is to stop trades, camera trades between all players. Like, imagine if we do this. It really breaks a big part of the game, yeah? And because there are pay people that play exclusively to make cameras. Uh, if you think about exchange of cameras being only through markets, if you stop the ability to meet in a zap and then change or trade. Uh, if you come to the, say, talking about the old ways of making money, you come to the Saudi, uh, so we can trade commas for real money. This morning, somebody asked me if it is expected to make uh, orders, buy orders. Is it something that is expected to, to fight against bots? That won't be sufficient because order, buy orders, will not be sufficient. The moment you have exchange between players, commas, gear, or whatever you want, you will have gold selling present on the game. It's inherent to the fact that the moment you can go in front of someone and give them hundreds or billions or whatever you want, that's it. You will go straight there instead of going through orders and this and that. So you can't have one without the other, I understand. Still linked to bots. You were saying just now that players have a little bit of uh, bot behavior when doing some uh, some profession is it expected to see some uh, some features that are botted to death like colosseum treasure hunts is there anything uh, planned i know that people in pvp watching the um, sparkling pebbles price dip down are really worried about this so he's having a good laugh about it first there will be a big differentiation that i want to give you uh right now between my personal inclination and that of the team because I think necessarily a lot of things, I think a lot of things about the game, but not all teams are okay. And there's a lot more f finesse in their way of thinking. Because I don't work game design 24-7 like the game designers. For example, the treasure hunt. There is a big thing to work inside of it. The formula does not work well. And from the start, from the get-go, this is my personal point of view. This is not, it's not a topic that I've spoken to with i'm not talking as the teams the game design teams i'm talking about myself the treasure hunts the main problem in my view which is what is asked from the players is not fun to begin with and the moment the feature works uniquely if you have uh, treasurehunt.com on your second screen it doesn't work it doesn't work and it doesn't work and we agree and then bots come in to replace the players who don't want to uh, participate in this feature and uh, produce uh, roses and things like that to uh, quest to craft items. Wow! And he's saying, you see, it, it, this is quite similar to quests, right? You can't quest without Dofus Pulenob, right? He's saying, yes, questing right now is a formula that does not work in its globality. Some of them are okay, but most of them. I will talk to the teams. The moment you finish in Karnam and Astrub, you get to the quest, certain quests where you have to 
walk the dragon to cemetery astro to the astro cemetery there are some things that i don't really like in the game again i've not consulted the team my personal opinion papino the pope Rathos, Rathosrok. he's saying go south and you don't know which go and sometimes is it just the little south or full on south so your reflex is to go on the office pool and know to find yeah if you don't have the ping in the map then you don't know where to go so at this part yes these are not some of the fun most fun parts but there's some quests who are there are some who are really well made some uh, quest fights are really good i've done them as a player found them quite cool and there are some things in quests that work really really well but at the moment the formula is stretched too much and it makes questing long frustr frustrating for players and it makes it really complex and complicated i want to give another stupid example that doesn't work at all it's the quest for the 20 year event there was one of the npcs i can't remember which one exactly but asked you many questions and if one time you answer wrong he will tp you to a machina outside of the area and you're like oh but this is not fun this is fucked i don't like this i have to walk all the way back and there's no zap i can ensure you that it's not the only one that does this in the game the fails i do i have loads of them but yeah this is what we call time gate uh uh, where you sanction characters where you have if you answer wrongly or well, they time you upwards of three hours this is rage inducing to me and he's the lead developer it's part of the things that really trouble us that bother us but part of the big things that in which the standards have to be changed so that players are not just harassed or things like that so it's not just bots it's also starting flipping we don't just want to fight bots we want to reformulate things it's a video game we want it to be fun we want to reformulate it so that players want to engage with it so there's less lack uh less need to go and automate things with bots so here there's some things that are quite just test skills whereas on on some quests in particular not having some uh, sanctions that are quite visceral treasure hunts having to find every pixel to try and find and every map to find whether it's there or not it's not too fun to begin with from the design part so it's one of the features that did not age well yeah so these are features that did not age well or necessarily from the start the way they were designed were not charitable kind yes this is mmo yes so it's a world that needs to evolve, go back, we need to go back on some features like that and read them. And sadly they are very omnipresent in the game. Thank you very much. I've, I'm looking at the uh, reactions of the chat and a lot of people are in agreement with you. He's talking about the um, Unity Phase 2 beta. He's saying uh, one of the biggest parts of the questions that people have submitted to him to ask around or to do with that. There's a lot of them. There's a lot that just want to see some data. There's a lot of things that are confidential. But would you have any stats to ask? Number of players, the uh, average level, how many, the most popular class, anything that you can give us. Ah, yes, yes, uh, 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 mm, mm. I'm at home, oh, I don't have access to all of this, I could have access to all of this, but VPN, security, na 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 na, it's a bit too complicated, let me see if I can share some without having to connect and all, at the level of the most popular class, chat, without looking too much, you will find which one, because it's the same every time, look at this, look, look at chat, crack, 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 crack. yeah, yeah, <laughs> one thing that surprised me the most between mono and multi account the repetition of classes change very little except the panda who is much more present in multi than in mono the second class at the level of the presence yeah panda and game yeah yeah as part of a team yeah yeah but at the level of classes if you want to know the ranking i have it now first one is craw Second one, Sadi, Fekka, Iop, Sakri, Hopper, Any, Foggernaut, Eliotrop, Ekaflip, Forge Lance. And then we go to the classes that were the least used. Enutroph, Panda, Shram, Xelor, uh, Rogue, 
mask and the last step Uginak. Uh, yeah, surprisingly Uginak. Uh, nobody's surprised. <laughs> and here we're finishing the last extract of data. We're working on them for the distribution of the rewards. Yeah. Let me find this for you. He's looking at the rewards. From memory. I'm doing this from memory. For the last... Ooh, the last tier 4. 500 players have reached it. 1,500 people have reached tier 3. It's, it's, it's very little. Right? 1,500 players only? I need to go and find the data so I'm not saying uh, rubbish right now. Let me find it. He's uh, trying to locate the data. And people want to know the difference. In those 500, 600 people we cheer for, how many x speed and how many did uh, the uh, profession? I could, but because I did not know that these questions will be, I don't have them immediately right now and it would take long to find them. Uh, he's saying that the Dofus player as a basis is starved of data and information. And there was one Temporis where they provided mega data and they loved it, but uh, giving data is really complex to provide you because it's a completely different team, the data team that manages it, generally speaking. It's always doable, but it's a big coordinating F coordination effort between players to get just to tell them which are the most interesting pieces of data that we want. How do we recuperate them? Because some data is not necessarily tracked, even if it's interesting to know. So every time it's a mega effort to coordinate. The very few times that we've done it was gratifying. It was great. We were all curious to see what was the most played class, the most hardest uh, mob to kill and this and this and that. But we've managed so far to put very little things in place. So we still have efforts to do at this level. So, for example, the uh, the poll that we've done on the beta, I was still writing the news, which will where, where we will share all this, the answers, the percentages, and stuff like that, the data that we've gathered. I'm still working on it as far as yesterday. You will get all the stats from the uh, poll and a little bit of analysis that will be worth what it's worth, but a little bit of analysis on these stats. I'll give you an example, an interesting stat I'll give you right now. One of the questions in the poll, which was towards the end, was it, did you ever share your feelings about the beta, Dofus beta? And we all know that this side of ma the majority, the silent majority and the uh, minority lull. And here it unleashed a cataclysmic re re reveal. 95% of people have never shared their uh, feelings on social media anyway. 95% is massive. Because even you said there was about 5,000 5, foreign posts in the first week. That tells you. Thank goodness there was 95% that did not share their uh, opinion. Because 5,000 is 5%. Holy shit. It's this thing that tells us that yes, we do have the impression and feeling that we are all get saying the same thing. But we're all just 5% that are sharing our opinions. Yeah, so we we feel like we agree, but we're 95% who did not put our opinion. Those 5% that have given it may be in agreement, but the vast majority do, do not necessarily share those opinions. And the poll that we've done now proves it, and it's really cool. And that's why we re, re, redacted, we're typing a piece of news, and we can't wait to share our analysis with you. He's saying, uh, I'm looking forward to do that, and we want to continue our questions about unity. Will there, be, will there be rewards in phase two? It was mentioned in, in the post. We have zero information. Everybody wants to know. Phase two was trying to find a good formula, but sadly we haven't found one. Without, without cannibalizing phase three. In phase three, we will definitely put some in place and we want them to be interesting. But what we wanted to do is uh, avoid the effect uh, that we've had on professions at phase one we've announced that very late late people have finished their rush they reached their objectives and they left but necessarily there's a little bit of a betrayal feeling for a month i found all of this and then 
You've just given this uh, freely to others. So there was that feeling of betrayal. So chat, if you don't want to test better and have... If you don't want to test the better and have a bad game in December, don't test the better. It's not, it shouldn't be a reward for the number of hours that you've spent. It's a raw testing for debugging. We've done a specific format to start a new server to test, uh, do tiers, because I knew that the better would have a feeling of temporis, the rush, and that's why we proposed it for the first month. However, for the rest of the beta phase two, and beta, we don't need, essentially, for you to have thousands of hours. We just need to verify that the game plays cleanly, and to see, uh, see breathing, for example, those of you who have big breathings from years and years, that it works very well in Unity. And that uh, the cosmetics and new systems that we've added in place, that they behave well. Now I've seen for a couple of hours already, I've seen some chat teams. Even though I'm off, I still kept an eye on things, the biggest bugs that were. And there was a big amount of them that was uh, brought to us. And we want that phase two be less interesting because we've seen what we wanted to see already on the first phase and and would it be would it be a, would it be possible to shorten it so you can release phase three earlier it would be possible uh it, it would be possible but it would mean we will release a phase three with more bugs and more problems and what we want is to take our time and debug smooth all the problems before we release a good phase three for you to play I'm trying to reformulate because I'm seeing a, a lack of understanding chat wise. The better is paid because having too many tests from people who don't know the game, it will, it will bring a lot of noise to the data that we're gathering. It wouldn't be interesting. It would be more damaging to get feedback from people who don't know the game who are testing it than from people who, as we know now in the chat, know the game, play it and go test it. So phase two. We have an, an immense need on the existing. So go test whether uh, the rooms, uh, the floors, the map, fight maps, are they behaving all right? The, as you expected. We don't want you to test every minuscule detail. This is not a real need that we have. We have a testing team. We have testing teams internally and external teams that we make work on us for this, on this quantitative testing but what you need to know for a video game whether it be Dofus or any other game there will never be enough testing because one as much as well as when you provide the player with the game so what we're continuing to see is whether we the optimization the stuff that we've brought is it good for uh, multi accounters yes no this is what we're keeping an eye on for example so in essence we have uh, memory leaks and the client that augments in RAM, yeah, this we still need to test. We still need to see if it behaves well for people who have, um, who will, uh, oh, one sec. We have problems on Max. Uh, he's talking about the Mac and how there were some mistakes that we almost always make and Mac, ignoring Mac people was one of the ones they made and the, the attitude, he's talking to the attitude of uh, having to have rewards for you to go and test the rewards to get the rewards is not a good one because you're just rushing mindlessly to get the rewards and it's a dumb way of testing because it damages the quality of the revamp that we get um, if we habituate and make our uh, community g become used to rewards to do anything, then it's something that is negative for the game because it brings this uh, habit, bad habit of I won't do anything unless you give me a real. If I don't get my sugar at the end of all I did, I'm not even coming. So nobody tests it, we don't get feedback and we release a shit game at the end and you're upset at the end of it. So nobody wins and everybody's upset throughout it. So if we have specific thing to go and test game design uh, style uh, like the pets mount of uh, I don't know it's a quest or something like that it becomes really complex to exchange with you get feedback from you and it better the game I'm not saying this to berate 
I'm not saying in the spirit of I want players to replace our game designers and uh, testers. No, it's not that. But right now, we are on a sort of timing where it becomes complex. Just for phase one. It's something that we should have put... We can't put the level of thought and rewards and work that we've put on phase one for all the phases. It's not physically possible. I'm sorry to ruin the week, but for me, yes, whether we're okay or whether we're not okay, we got the answer that we got from you. But I want to quickly, because we've already spoken for an hour, and I'm only in page two out of five of the questions, and I still have loads of them. While we are talking about the topics that upset, let's talk about another one and get it over with. There's a lot of pl players that have uh, cosmetics in their uh, gift interface, and you've already announced it, that there's a lot that are facing difficulties digesting this decision these are things sometimes that are linked to the account to the character why have you closed the possibility to have it because it's not going to touch the economy They're, they'll never be up for sale so uh, the first one let's start with uh the point of view the um, my point of view and then go to the technical side my point of view is that the unity new servers that arrive on December be as virgin as possible we want as new servers as possible so that things that should not be there uh, rewards that you've had 10 years that are sat there that you will bring to unity is so weird I find this completely weird it's from a role play existence of the server it does just not make sense for when I played I was so jealous back back in the day when I used to play. I was so jealous of the Jiva server because they had things that I'd never had. For example, I have, if I have an amulet that I went to this uh, co convention or this event or this or that, getting the G the I was there Dofus, it makes sense because uh, in the server the event happened. But if you come to a server, uh, a new server that started now and you have things that events that happened 10 15 years ago it just don't make sense at all it's from a role play perspective it's from a player based cohesion point of view and then if uh, the second point which is purely technical server side is we are how do we do the architecture back office uh, what we put in the gift side uh, here we will have to do a big sort of patchwork the prospection candy uh, wisdom can we will have to go over all of them right so the patch that we found is to add a time we will give you the news, we will announce the time, maybe October, November. Everything that is starting from this date will not go on the new server. So we'll have a cutoff date to ensure that we have nothing nasty that will be put on those new servers. We've known this in Temporis in the past where you had Prospection Candy and uh, Wisdom, Mango or whatever. You have nothing worse than... Um, Ha some players having those at the start of a new server because that helps their rush and gives them an unfair advantage. So we've talked about this during the beta yesterday and, ye and the day before with Ribeck. The rewards for the beta, we will give you them post news. Post this news and post the fact of locking your rewards. So you would be able to add them to the new servers or the existing ones. You get to pick whichever you want, but these rewards will be injected between end of October towards November, so you can be sure to have them on the new servers. And to bounce on what you've said just now, will the shop be accessible on the new server? Because if it is accessible and that you buy something within it, it, it will break this side that you've mentioned there, this uh, role play side, this uh, version server. So if you buy a uh, we're talking about Illumino, for example, in the chat. There's cosmetics and things like that that you can buy from the shop. Illumino is very specific because it's pure gameplay. It's a sidekick. It has always existed and it will always exist. There are some uh, particular situations that are quite d difficult to manage if you have some codes. And we have given some during the convention. The Locust Shield, for example. Yeah. I will give you the uh, tip right now. If you wait to use it and use it at the time
Ah, we can't stop you using those. Yeah, so the local shit, if you have a code on a card and you hold on to it, you will be able to use it in Unity. So, oh, we have some limitation, technical limitations, and we can't really manage those. So this is a tip I've given you. So if you bought the 25 euro pack or the 31, hold on to it, hold on to it. Uh, he's talking about in-game, if you go and buy your subscription and stuff like that, in this shop, in the same shop where you buy subscription and stuff like that, this you can't manage. To, to tell you globally, on the back office side, we have different criteria that allow uh, attribution of cosmetics and web stuff that you buy on different types of servers. There are excessively few to do it, to make it happen. But right now, the principal distinction between servers is whether it's epic, classic, or temporis. These are the only distinction that we have. So the thing is, the new servers that will come out with the Unity, they will be technically classic. But how do you do to say that in a classic server you can attribute certain things and not on another one where they are technically the same but we have nothing technical to differentiate them. You know? There is no classic server of this year, no distinction between them. I'm sort of bastardizing the point here but these are consequent things in terms of development because we have large data hundreds of thousands of millions if not billions of uh, gifts pending these are things that we don't want to toy with because it's a massive hell if we open this kind of worms and have to You've announced that GPS will be available for everyone, pets mount, and maybe even on foot. It's a good, and even on foot, this is a good news. So for those who already bought the GPS, and sometimes who bought it in euros, is there a compensation that is uh, planned? Maybe not, not in euros? Yes. So on the system of compensation, that is something that I wanted to go over in priority, but Unity makes it so that I never have the time. Never have the time to go. We have a game designer that is working on this. Because we're trying to see the compensation system and make it so that you get some compensations that are real in terms of gameplay. For example, you'll have a little shop where you can, NPC, where you can buy something that generates 200% Colosseum or that gives you, oh, doubles your generation of resources in terms of uh, professions, farming, and things like that. We want to give you. You always have wisdom and prospection and the usual things, but we want to bring you some real useful things in terms of gameplay to reward you for having spent money or cameras or whatever to buy the um, GPS. So for those of you who have GPS mounts now, you'll have access to these compensations to have a sort of uh, payback in terms of direct gameplay. I think this is something that will please others more than previous uh, rewards. <laughs> the item reworks or uh, recipes low level will it arrive before Unity. You said, you, you know, if you modify resources, it can modify rush plans. It can balance some some stuff between them. You know, the agility um, items are broken at low levels. So Oh, here we can tell you some crazy stats at this level. I've asked Data during phase one to tell, uh, to give us a beautiful table uh, dashboard, the stuff equipped by level for each character, right? So we had the repetition of equipment uh, for every sort of level between one to level two hundred, as in terms of percentage, right? Tofu Fu was available up until level 140 and it doesn't surprise anyone yeah it doesn't surprise you yeah right but it's just to tell you that it's a heresy that an item has so much use case and it lasts for so long so for some items aside from looking for ap mp it didn't matter so some um, like the uh, lumberjack you put an ap x on it and you never really remove it there are some items that are aberrations are you calling it a heresy or is it the balancing of everything else that is a heresy Right now, I don't think that it that it amuses anyone to be on 6-3. Of course, we go look for more AP, more AMP, to do, to do more actions, hit harder, and things like that. Is it not the other items that need to be upped instead of those being nerfed? 
Yes, there's a lot of things that need to be up. This is what we're thinking about the formula because maybe, and I'm saying maybe, because these are things that we're discussing game design wise, but we're not active them yet. There are some items like uh, Gobble to have an AP bonus starting from third or fourth uh, item. So you can mix and match and use other sets and make other things more viable. So you can be more modular, low level. If your strength, you're going to go and look for your... Uh, Gobble set, but you can hardly change if you don't have any item that gives you an AP, like Abra Casca and things like that. If you're Aji, you've got the Royal Toady, and you will change items until you get to White Right, Black Right, but never before because you don't really care. There are some things that need big bu bu buffs, but it's not all about just nerfing what is really strong, but it's also about buffing also. Let's not just break what is already interesting. Let's bring up the things that are not used as much just to balance things out a little bit. So going back on the beta. Yes, we want so that all these changes happen by beta 3, phase 3. I can't tell you exactly. We're still working on so many topics, game development side. So it's really complex and complicated to give you an exact delivery date. So... Yeah, so sometimes not giving you a date and waiting two weeks and doing it and giving you a proper thing is better than announcing it and giving you a broken thing. So, yeah, I can't give you an exact date about Facebook. Superb. While still talking about items, on the 13th of August news, we will be able to test uh, shield revamps. Um, the roadmap that you've presented us in the uh, convention, yeah, it's still, it is still planned. Shields, ooh, hold on. Should I say this or not? The devs will kill me. Should I say, if if it can reassure you, a colleague of yours had said one of the ideas is to, is to remove the percentage damage from shield. Good, 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 good. Okay, 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 good, good, good. No, we are still on this formula. It's something that is happening. Alan, put your seatbelt on. Phase one and phase two were all about bugs integration of small topics that we're waiting like cosmetics and stuff like new systems that we've added to the thing phase three will be really where you see gameplay modifications where you will test a lot balancing class balancing that will happen we have a lady that is working on zellors and she's thinking a lot about those uh the shields we have the fact that we're completely removing the percentage spell damage and stuff like that and then Passing them on other items or maybe something just to balance uh, shields so it doesn't become the only item where it's pure power creep. <sighs> Woo! Wow. Wow, 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 wow. The new servers. New question about new servers. Is there anything that is uh, previewed or something that is uh, to stop? To stop monopoly of items, uh, paradox and stuff like that. Because you can just monopolize early rush, get organized and then buy everything and resell it six months. Uh, I can't tell you the formula because we'd not sit down and think about it properly. But we have time uh, marked for the next week in our calendars to think about the early phase um, of the server rush. But what we don't want is the exact same thing that you described. You don't. If the moment you're the first one to create a guild, if you're well organized, you buy everything that exists, and then you can resell it or not. You monopolize. These are things that we want to address. We I can't tell you anything concrete because because we haven't really started working on them. But yeah, it, yeah. Another question that I have is uh, spell animations on some classes. Or similar for, for different spells. So the craft, for example, will have the same exact animation for about a big number. Is this this by design, or is the idea for every spell to have its own animation? It's complicated because here, this is just an efficacy animation side. It's uh, for games generally. You reuse a lot of what you have to stop you having to restart. Yeah, not necessarily go to the best thing because you have 40 spells to uh, times 19 times 2 because you have very, it's very quickly uh, massive boards that you have to reproduce and work on. So the reproduction is logical in the current uh, stage that we are at. And uh, realization side. Uh, yes, um, what was he talking about? These are things that we're always paying attention to, uh, production side. The time, 
that we spend bringing better animation and make sure that every spell has its own animation, it's a time that we don't spend producing new content, a new temporis, new class. It's still a balance that we have. It's a delicate balance to find between what we can enhance. Infinite, so you know what I mean? <laughs> you can spend a lifetime just better in that tiny little detail about animation. There's a time where you have to draw a line, stop, and say, is a time spent working on this more useful? Is it better used elsewhere? Are we good as well? Yeah. Eh. And the, 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 the attitude that we have right now is the priority is unity, new extension, new expansion pack, new content, new stuff, rather than just better in animation. If it ever is to come one day, I know it's not planned now, but if it happens, we expect that it would be towards the second six months after you finished working on? Yeah, yeah, clearly it will, it can only be. For example, uh, changing the idols and things like that on uh, fight stances and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, we will see how the community behaves when we put the solutions we have in place now and uh, see if we need to put more work into them or we can go back on them later on and put more work in. You have talked about a potential return of tactical mode. You thought it's something that is conceivable to bring at really high levels, but not low levels. Is it still something that you've thought about some more? Is it coming back? We have not sat down and, and talked about it at all. Tactical mode is something that is really annoying for us. I really can't give you an answer right now. Because in terms of reflection, I have not even thought about it now myself. To be completely honest, there are arguments from both sides. There are some things that, um, for tactical mode, I can't really give you an interesting answer right now as it stands. Because I myself have not given it any more thought to really give you a coherent and... Uh, however, ah, I'll let you. The animations. I don't know if you have any other questions about animation. No, there are no more questions about animation. Because there's one thing that we've tested internally that we need to see if it's something that will provide on the better or not. And he's, he's laughing. One of my devs had a crazy idea at one moment. What if we could cut a spell at any time animation side? We could have, at the moment you release... Oh, he had a crazy idea. You could interrupt any animation at any moment. So theoretically if you cast all your spells then you've removed no animation even you will have a highly responsive game that can chain spells as you want them it can give some weird things when we've tested it but it's something that we could we could provide this for you to test and see if it behaves well or not in game if there are some uh, side effects that we need to continue debugging or continue to continue to test well. I'll give you an example, I'll give you an example. There's a limitation that we found to this thing. If there is no system that manages this in terms of logic, it wants, it means that you can cast many spells, but the spells work, whether the states show or not, because if you manage to put four spells on three frames, it would become really hard if you're distributing 15,000 damage on three separate mobs with those four. It's, it's incredibly hard. So we have to make sure that the animations and the frames and everything works in terms of logic behind it. And that legibility is not affected. And it's something that is quite beneficial if we can bring some version of this without completely removing animation because it will give you a beautiful fluid game uh, with all the states and everything to it. Everybody's happy with your answer. Thank you very much for that. Okay. I don't know where I was. I'm lost. Yeah. I, you have mentioned during one of the lives the possibility, the possibility to have a pioneer success on new servers. To be able to generate pebbles early in game. Yep. Yep. This was part of the big package that you've asked earlier about the paddocks. Uh, houses, there's a big complete package that is called new server release. Sh what are the blockages? What should be enhanced? What should be removed? What, we what should we pay attention to? Pioneer success is part of this. We're thinking about whether to put uh, guild, guild achievements, for example, early phase. 
this would please us, yeah, to boost the community aspect of it. There's loads of things that are doable uh, that we've put in place uh, during the Shadow event, if you remember. With some things that we've put in place with Unity because we're more flexible on uh, many client-side things. As I say, there's a big package of things that we're thinking about, game development size, so that the release are banger, so that the rushes are not just race to stuff, to gear, and race to level 2 on. We want to bring some community aspect to it, some things that you do collectively. Cool! While we're still on the uh, server rush new release, are you still thinking about some sort of pre uh, uh, registering system, registration system? Ah, oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. We're thinking with the web team, if we could have registration for multi-accounting as well. There would be, so you're saying there would be a different kind of, it would not, it would be the same page that you use, but you would then uh, pick a preference whether you want multi-accounting or mono-accounting and pick which one you want to work for really. And this is where you lock pseudos because we know that team pseudos are really important. <laughs> And because there will be new account and uh, mono account, it's really important to have registration for both. Something that is completely unrelated, but it's Unity related. You have presented the new logo at the convention, whereas we had a an old logo that was presented uh, years years ago during the Unity Live. Why have you changed it? This is some problems that we've had with it. Me particularly. To take the movie typology was a bit annoying because we're in the game, we're not on the movie. Uh, the, the, the font was not really good and what it represented for us as a game did not make sense. And it was the same shared feeling internally with the team. Everybody accepted it, but we still were not happy with it. So we thought to go back over it and we worked with Frano on it for about easily two months to smooth it and work. So it's just to have an identity more particular to the game and separate it uh, from the Yeah, more video game than movie, yeah. So the font that we're using and the logo that we're using right now, the one that we had previously, so good if you're making a movie poster. But the moment you're making a poster uh, for a move for a game, it was lacking so. It was more cinema adapted than video game adapted, so we've changed. And finally, one last question about tools, tooling, more technical. Or maybe you'll lose me. Why Unity and not Unreal Engine? First of all, maybe many, many devs, when they leave school and stuff like that, they do C Sharp very easily. And Unity, C Sharp, highly compatible, fantastic. Whereas Unreal Engine is a lot more compatible. It's more uh, technical, it's a different language altogether and things like that. And the other thing is, on we did a... Um, market uh, call, whatever it's called, I can't remember the name in English, where you, uh, it's like, uh, what is it called? You put your idea forward and people come in and you select the best offer. And uh, Unity was commissioned by Ankama from the earliest phase because they had the best offer and uh, they've worked on it for about two, two and a half years. And uh, this is how one thing led to the, to the other and and it allows us to standardize production and the competences within the company. For Waven, for example, it's done in Unity. So it means that in terms of exchanging processes, putting technical stuff in place, uh, company-wide, it's, it's an invisible thing to you as players. But the moment you have to talk with the web team that manages shops and uh, gifts, tabs and data and all that, the reception of the data to show it to you. When we have different technologies on our, the inter-service as we call it is hell because every game has its own thing that works for it. Whereas now with having standardized Unity, Waven is on it, Dovis Touch is on it, Dovis is on it. We have something a bit more standard between all production teams and it's ultra beneficial for us to have something that is standardized that all teams have less problems communicating with things. Cool. Let's talk about Unity a little bit, but more interface this time. I've uh, gotten the question, as it is, he's prefacing it. How is an interface worked for three years, could have, managed by an external company, would have these many problems, magnetism, legibility, looks, and everything like that. Essentially, the company that worked for us, Pix, did not work on the dev side. 
they have purely their mission was to design the interface but not to integrate it so this is two fields of work completely different the design and the the magnetism for example it was something i did not follow very closely this but the devs were unhappy with the quality that we had in the beta which it's not simple to just an afternoon boom and then you solve for the magnetism problem it's not something as easy as that it requires a lot more work and the next thing the real 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 problem for me and i'm speaking in my name not in the team's name for me the real issue here in the interface side was the ue ui ux was not made by the biggest players and you can see that on the interface and the follow-up that we've done was not sufficient of sufficient quality to give them feedback to guide the interfaces towards something that is more positive generally for the game for me i say there's a problem from both sides which means the problems that were the people that were in charge of this part are not players and they don't have the best reflexes as players to detect whether something is going to function or not and from our side here again i'm talking I was not in charge of the project at the time. I don't want to denigrate what has been done in the past. I understand why it was done, but I'm not denigrating it. But I think the follow-up from our side was not clean to guide um, the interfaces in the right direction. So the problem, really, the people who have worked on it <clears throat> have done the job more than the job that was uh, expected of them. But remember, they are nothing but an external company they've delivered and if the mission that was asked and the follow-up that was done from the client size the 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 the, um, the the person who has worked on it can be as good as they want if the client doesn't tell them what they like they like and direct them right so the follow-up was lacking from our side we didn't have the reflex to be like oh this is impersonal we need something a bit more and go back to them and make them change it so for me there was a problem when i say the mission that we've given to fix or fix or it was very good but it was not perfect for the unity porting and the follow-up in my view was not good enough to make sure that we and we ended up with what you have now in september in september end of uh, august yep he's thanking him for his honesty and yeah while talking about external companies that don't work for the get for the company but don't play it we're talking about eterna race who is in the chat He's asking him, what happened there? Have you made any advance? Yes, we've done our last vocal. What I was saying earlier, Friday was the last conversation they've had, globally speaking. It's an enormous risk for the project for us to um, work with him and uh, still meet our deadline for December. So this is, we've talked uh, with him on Friday and uh, we want to try and start working with him from next week, the, the next few weeks. But also we want to bring a very big uh, revamp of interfaces in, in March or April because we don't want to compromise the release on December. If we start working on them now, we risk to bring more problems than solutions. We will have a sort of patchwork between the current artistic direction and what Eternaris would like to bring. Lots of bugs, lots of left and right because we would be between integration and debug. And dev side, this is just nuts to manage. Yeah, it's just insane. It's insane. My plan, as it is right now, uh, to see whether it's a good thing or not, next year will tell us. My current plan would be to work with the Ternares, take our time, work very well in the background, and propose something that is insane in March. Let's go! <laughs> Let's go, that's good. Uh, talking about an update. Uh, he's talking about 16.9 as a frame. This is a really good question. Why didn't you work using Unity to redo another upgrading of the whole thing to 69 uh, if we ever talk about H 
Uh, it's in December the HD pack anyway. <laughs> the community, uh, you disappointed me right now. Uh, the problem with everything that we're talking about here right now, the picto images, things that we use on the maps, edges, we have uh, a lot of sources that are old, so uh, that lack sources. So rescaling something that does not have a good base will just make it even blurrier and that's not what we're trying to do the um edges and everything in flash are already blurry so augmenting the resolution of what already existing without augmenting the uh resolution of the base file is creating problem later on and it's, it's, not, some, it's not how i want to do the work so what we want to do is go back to the sources rescale them up properly uh so a 16 9 in the long term, it is very possible, uh, but it will not be. And it's something that they want to propose in the HD pack to propose a better gaming experience overall. And a question that will be more targeted. The tactical mode and uh, does not help people who are colorblind or have uh, visual impairments. The community led themes were helping with that. Will there be a Daltonian theme or a colorblind theme to facilitate their gaming experience? Globally, the colors that we have picked for the interfaces, um, colorblindness was taken into account to bring more contrast. This is why uh, people play with themes instead of the base one. Whereas when it comes to the tactical mode, from we, we need to rework it. So, uh, semi-tactical mode, excuse me. We have worked to do on that level because even a game that does not have any color blindness or any color impairment still has problems. See, some areas, the contracts maybe is lacking. It's really hard to read which cell uh, is it odd or uh, even. So going back to basis, we really do need to rework this generally speaking. Yeah. He's mentioning the glyphs that make it really hard again. So color blindness right now, it's not really a pack specifically designed or theme for colorblindness, it's not in the pack. But as you see, uh, one of the devs, Koto, that was with us, he's colorblind. So uh, you'll have to converse directly with him. But it is not expected. It's not something that we want to bring. And we don't know exactly how we're going to do this without going directly through. Uh, without going, uh, without pronouncing the unpronounceable, going directly to a tactical mode. <laughs> On the interface topic. We want to completely change the topic. Logan in the back in the past wanted to add an ad system to uh, f help people find groups and things like that. Is it still something that is in the plans? Yes, it's still something that we want to bring for the Unity release um, because for me is it's borderline obligatory because there's of the many problems that, that exist in the game and I really don't like for an MMO. You understand that you're an MMO from the moment that you can either go towards the economy, some markets, or the first moments, or you're blocked in a dungeon and you're obliged to call for help. But there is no, there's very little time. There's very little time. In Conum, you can do it on your own. For MMORPG, it's sad. It's sad. We've done a little study um, some months ago to understand the new players, what are their frictions, what are things that they don't like and one of the things and the rich side, the rich side of the game only brings comes out when they do Cardarim dungeon for man and they find people. If I go on, they understood that if I go on my own, it's really hard, but the moment they go on for man it becomes really interesting it brings out the fun of it and the moment they far find themselves having to tactically decide what classes they play who who the others coordinating two three you start to see combinations the interest in having this class with this one or i i much more like to play with this class than any other one and this is what brings out so the little ad system is really cool but there's a lot of work to do at this level in order to bring out the game um, multi people to collaborate to bring out the MMO in MMORPG. Now let's go on the uh, uh, market side. When will there be a real history of sales that you can consult whenever? Because sometimes you just miss the message and that's it, it's gone. I know there's a ticket that is currently being managed on this. I can't say exactly when, 
But I know there are things that are happening, but I can't tell you exactly one. Again, something similar. Uh, the uh, buy and sell lots of a thousand for some resources. Mm. This is quite simple to do, really. I should just uh, just add it. It's something that we've proposed on retro. So on it, honestly, there's very little reasons not to do it on uh, Duffy's two or three. <laughs> should we say it Tuesday? Should we have this up? Let's say Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a bit too early this Tuesday, but for Flash, it's absolutely not possible because we're going to leave the dinosaurs where they are. But for Unity, it's clearly something that could happen very easily. Oh, there was the um, reporting system that was announced. There were loads of returns. I've made a tweet on this. I'm, I'm one of the happiest people on uh, Dofus. <laughs> But I still had some negative returns on my tweet. I'm go I've, I've picked three questions that kept coming back, right? With this new system, is there, do you, are you planning to bring paid moderators to manage the reports? So what has happened? This return, what has happened is on retro, we had the same system that exists in the game, right? And the thing is, there's lot less retro than on Dofus 2 and uh, 3. So now what happened on retro is that we have a, a funnel where we have so much and very little resources. Whereas in D2, Dofus 2, we are perfectly comfortable and confident that the moderators and the amount of people that we have on the team will be able to handle it. Uh, we, we're not showing you how it's handled in the background, but we think it's a lot simpler and uh, easier on the moderators to handle this very quickly. And we have tested this internally at the convention level. We've brought them in and we've discussed with them and they are only excited and waiting to test it. So mo paid moderation is not something that we will bring in this project. I've seen this question, but I think it's lunatic. To, uh, are you planning to give any rewards for people who have uh, who report a lot and have good ones? No, this is weird. I found this weird as well, but anyway. <laughs> but since it's asked for the better, what you there? Why don't we just ask you and get it out of the way? Uh, I understand maybe the side of uh, having a little image on uh, when you're at primary school and you do something good and they give you a sticker, but. That's it, that our past has shown that we don't want to go there. And if we can avoid to awaken some demons, it would be really good. Okay, how can we with the system avoid that bots? Oh, bots. How can we ensure that bots don't use the system towards nefarious events or that big alliances coordinate attacks on one person to get rid of them or something? We have announced this. There is a viability, no, not a bit, a reliability index. That means that if we have mass reporting of one person, who have uh, average or low reliability in this, is something that will be taken into account. Moderation. So we want mm, the reporting where there is time chat and stuff like that gives a lot of indication moderation side to not be duped by things like that uh, so this is why we got in ahead of it and we've put this reliability index to stop 40 people reporting someone in three minutes and then we are having to ban them and that's good okay so i was told in commentary in in, com in the comments that the report system is already in retro but that necess it's not really functional. There were bots everywhere. Have you not considered that? Are you not worried that you might do the same thing for Office 2? Here we have to report, to distinguish the type of reports that happen. In uh, the Office Retro, the bots are quite different from the Office 2 and 3. And the problem that they have in Retro is that signaling of bots are quite complex to be accepted moderation side because moderation does not have the tools necessary in order to process them. These are sensitive data that we can't just show them. For example, at no time does moderation have personal data of 
the account, whether it's a valid account or not, whether they have a um, um, an ID card or not. Or uh. whereas in uh, Dofus Two, it would be completely different at this level because bots in Dofus Two, for the most active ones, are really stupid and easily recognizable bots. So having bands made by mods on Dofus 2 in Colosseum because you have a Sadie level 160 wearing a, a pew set easy it's much easier than retro and the last big big difference is the effective the number of team people that work on the moderation team between um, Dofus 2 and retro is staggeringly different the first one does not have enough resources to absorb the signaling and stuff like that whereas Dofus 2 I'm telling you I'm confident they have the resources it takes the numbers and everything to it now let's talk about the revamps um, I have uh, questions on revamps of every single individual class uh, but this has come up a lot on the PVM community doing revamps is uh, PVM taken into account and is there a point at which you can possibly see a differentiation between PVM and PVP spells at least on the value or something like that oh he's dying he's dying on the background this is a really complex topic globally no because it, this differentiation would be too heavy to bring game design on the team as it exists right now remember we have 19 classes more than 40 spells it's really hard to do something like this uh, and to say that it will never come is not something i ever want to say it's something that we're thinking about we need to continue to test work on the other point on here is the modification is pvm taken into account of course it is taken into account but typically there is a difference between and this you already know it for those of you that multi-account <coughs> dungeons are globally thought out to be the most viable four towards five but towards eight the team is less guaranteed uh, because the game is designed for four it's really hard to have a, as good an experience eight man <clears throat> and i want to use this uh, uh i have a question that is directly linked to this why are team more than eight are so impacted why don't you do modulation for this for example the gladiator tool that is four man will there be achievements eight man for these players that play eight man and special provisions for these players we don't have achievements uh, for four man we have all content designed for four except the duos which have uh, uh, we could go on this formula here, but it's not a discussion that we've had internally with the team at all to do stuff for eight people. So how do we explain that fights can be done eight, but the players who are playing eight are sort of less rewarded compared to the four man or duos? The history of the game. The history of the game and the modulation that we've brought at this level of teams was about around Fry Ghost 2. I, you can tell me in chat the modulation arrived in Frygos 3 Frygos 3, yeah it was Frygos 3, you're right and we already noted some differences in difficulty between B B4 or 6 or 8 some uh, floors or um, some rooms came really difficult or really easy for example in Obsy Demon the moment you have uh, one of the mobs that you added the second one that can resummon then you had to do it four because it became incredibly difficult to manage so modulation uh, has been having an impact for a very long time on game design and we are inheritors of the legacy that Dofus uh, has given us it was thought out to be played eight beginning the data shows it it was designed to be played by eight the modes of game and stuff like that and We've noticed that pretty much most people play in 4, although the game was designed for 8. Running 8 accounts, subscribing 8 accounts, it's not so evident. So it was a choice that not many people made, even though the game was designed for 8. So it was very quickly introduced, uh, what we call the modulation, to follow the train that the players were espousing. So here, we're really just inheritors of the legacy that we have 
uh, from historical and more people have the tendency to play four than for eight uh, because it's the logic that the, the players have had for 14 15 years and in this case in this case why let the max number of players eight if we know that anyway most people play four because it exists again it would be very negative or punitive to tell everyone that plays for 20 years eight man team but now you can't do anymore that's it done you play four it would be very very negative and uh, yeah it remains annoying to not guarantee the same game quality to everyone that is clearly a thing yeah yeah it's frustrating and it's something that we would like to go back on and rework to guarantee sort of guarantee the same quality for everyone but it's not really evident well, let's talk about class revamps. You've answered this earlier because you said that the Xelor revamp, you're working on it already. Is it still expected for the end of the year? Xelor, yes. It's less a revamp. Don't, don't expect to have a completely different gameplay. Game, game design side, this little twist that have been brought to some classes to make it more viable in pvm there will not be a complete revamp in the sense that you've had for the echo flip for example okay and this one i promise you that it was asked is it ugin a complete revamp coming we talk about differentiation pvp and pvm but in pvp it's a strong class and pvm is completely useless is there anything that is uh and you've mentioned it earlier in the battle it was the last pick actually now as it stands no but after the results I've seen, yeah, we need to go back over it and rework it. <laughs> you worked earlier about the guild achievements, and this professes a question I have. Cool has uh, mentioned the raid term. Mm. What can we expect to see that with guild? Are there a system? Yes! Globally, it's something that we want to bring. Raids is something that we want to bring in 2025 in guilds. Uh, Essentially wanted to bring it for December, but because of the calendar that we had, the workload, it's really hard to bring it for December. But essentially something that we want to bring to start in 2025, guild raids, globally. Do I want to get into details? Why is he? Go, 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 give us some more details. It's complicated, it's complicated. But globally, we want you to be able to do massive fights where you have three teams same as world boss as a game uh, have the same objective health uh, okay so you have one big HP bar and every team will have 33% of the fight the damage to do or something like that so it's it's long term design these are concepts that I'm telling you we have in our heads the realization may be different by next year but we're really thinking we want to boost the MMO side cooperative side and have shared uh, guild objectives for you to work together towards. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the next year. I'm hyped. We talked about guilds. Let's talk about alliances. Is the alliance revamp satisfactory to you right now? Or are there expected uh, changes to come? There are changes expected. We wanted to bring them this year, but we weren't able to because of Flash again. Yes, there are modifications of alliances happening. In fact, Globally, we want to enha enhance the gameplay cough in alliances, which is not good now. There's a lot of twists and ideas that we have game design inside. The capture AVA, stuff like that. We want to bring lots of changes that, uh, yeah. So there's lots of changes that will be brought. We're still thinking about them. We wanted to bring them to you this year, but I can't, because of Flash, it was really, really, really hard. But yes the update the alliance update is not satisfactory to us and we need to go back over it professions a revamp profession revamp more complicated to say yes than previously on the previous question yes i want to go back over professions but generally speaking here we go into the hell of development of game design and mmos especially is we want to do everything but we have time to do nothing it's not at the top of the basket, you mean? Yeah, sadly it is that. The professions, I'd love to go and redo them right now. But it's it's something that I love in MMOs. I'm very professional oriented. But typically in the beta, I've... Uh, I, whoa, he, he, he leveled his uh, Lumberjack 200 
just like he does every time. But the formula that we have right now has not evolved for a very, very long time. And what I'm seeing right now, passing in front of MMOs, some interesting concepts I really like, recipes that are available in other games, some things that we could just bring you in a stylish way in the office. Yeah, a revamp of professions, even game design side, we're dreaming of that. It's something that we want to bring. But it's more interesting to touch classes, bring new content. We will see if we can slide those in a future extension or expansion back. We'll see. A revamp of states. I'm thinking particular in PV, PVM. I don't know how it works, but in PVM, for example, you have uh, gravity stays, you gravity it, and it will just jump. No problem. And I, and I think 90% of bosses in 2024 that are able to jump through... Um, uh, gravity state. Is it something that you want to review? No. No, not yet. Here again, we're passing a lot of uh, enhancements for states, legibility and stuff like that. But, no. Stat, no. There is no expected revamp of... Um... Is it, it... Oh, are you going to do anything to dreams? Uh, we're, we're going to revamp them completely. Yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. It's one of the next year's, possible next year's uh, updates. Yeah, Tuesday during the live, you've mentioned that it's possible that it would come. The boostache and the boostache could possibly be modular in difficulty to adapt to and give more tokens depending on which level you've attacked it. Is it something that could be deployed on all of the game's dungeons to re-dynamize them and uh, bring back some um, interest in them and retest them at their own level? I can see you, Wakfu player. I can see you coming. <laughs> uh, you have to know that the re reality, the current state, Wakfu will stay Wakfu things. It's not something that we want to borrow and bring Dofus. It's a formula that is Wakfu, made for Wakfu. And the last point that makes all of this interesting in the game, <clears throat> which is what we tend to forget, game. The um, modulation is interesting just because uh, Meijin is viable thanks to this. If you have modulation of level, and the current stasis that increases without watching the item, the destruction of resources and everything, it will flop completely. Because Wakfu, if it works well, it's because the modulation is uh, nourished by maging and destruction of items and the ladders that make in for interesting rewards. So it's not something that we want to bring at all in the game. Bring interested low level items there are other way uh, low level dungeons and stuff content there are other ways that we can do so there's uh ff14 is a game that has found an elegant way of doing it is uh, there's a notion of daily that you do on your character which is you tag in a random way and the game will modulate a le to the necessary let's say if you get a level 40 and you're level 200 they will level it to 200 for you and uh, so that yeah so that uh, when anybody arrives in the game you always have people to the dungeon with it doesn't mean you're just gonna go and farm low level dungeons on this type of uh, game to talk about the difficulty of the game what vision have you got for pvm knowing very well that the tank panda and elutrops portals sort of make it Pass, uh, bypass all of the game mechanics, dungeon mechanics. This is a really vast question. Um, it is a big notion of balancing for PVM so that the uh, Panda and Ilya are less omnipresent in every stress and every... It's a big topic to put forth. Again, honestly, it's a complex question. It's not something that we have talked with the team recently at all, so I can't give you an answer or anything. Uh, it's, it's, it's not interesting to talk about this because I have nothing... I only have personal stuff and it's not interesting to just give you hope on the basis of what I think and then the team has not given any. Another question that will touch gameplay and then he erupts in laughter. 
the rivalry, Banta and Brackmar, why is it not exploded, exploited as much? Why is it not used and brought forth? How about bringing that to alliances to redynamize them and bring some more life into them? That's a really good question. The Bonta Brack rivalry has been suspended for a long, long period of time because lore, story, the two, uh, the two cities are um, in a cold war state. They are backstabbing, but they don't want to go straight into a direct war like it has been. So the answer, pure roleplay and lore. Nations are not fighting. So use an alliance, as you mentioned, to canalize their hatred towards the others. Maybe interesting. There could be things to do at that level. It's a beginning of an idea that I have put forth for a possible expansion in the future. Maybe it could come towards next year or towards the end of next year. We'll see. <clears throat> now I don't have any particular theme. They're just random questions. We have 40 minutes left. Holy shit, I need a Wii. Which will be the first big project after Unity is working? You said maybe March, the make everything more beautiful. And June... Uh, new content first big lot of there's a certain type of content that we only have fourth of i would think having a fifth would be interesting let's see if we can go on that when will you make a skins uh show for belts and rings no right now no it's not yes it is complex i don't want to say that it's not but there is some things to see at that level, but it's not really expected to arrive soon. Is it expected to add a new uh, mount for breeding or new pets with uh, missing uh, uh, effects? Mounts, I would really love to, to have uh, a new type of mounts. There are some cool things to see, mount side. Because essentially, a uh, gameplay style, what I find is missing is that we have less memorable moment the moment you push the ascension to level 60 and the ability to use mounts is so marking level 100 you get the xip mm. once you go past that that's it you don't have many more objectives stuff gear size pvm size there's nothing to mark um 130 140 150 and having new types of mounts to post potentially mark those steps might be interesting uh, to my to my mind um, the old style dofus when you saw someone with a certain aura or a certain equipment that would arrive in 40 or 50 levels it would give you the willingness to go and rush that level and keeps you so maybe I think it would be really cool if we could bring a, t a new type of mount to mark these new levels <clears throat> Power leveling, is it something that you accept, that you're trying to remove, to change, to limit? The person who put this question. Oh wow, the person who put this question forward has, he said the lowest level, if you have a low level character, then nobody can use spells higher than their level. That would limit having um so power leveling according to him nidas for example for a really long time has been coriander and uh, pia for a very long time have been the staples maybe it's since 2014 2015 coriander it's still viable people use it people do it for me Power leveling is not so negative for a game that is so old. It's when you arrive on a really old game, it's the very high level that is interesting. So those who invest within it will never reinvest to do their power leveling again. So there are some more clever things to do, but power leveling, generally speaking, for a game that has existed for so long, it exists. It's logical that it exists. It makes sense. It's one of the primary preoccupations. Everyone that comes back to the game, if you haven't played it for six months, one year, that is what's interesting for you, is the 190 plus content. You don't want to do Blob Dungeon again, and, and you have to do it four times for around the world. Uh, 
Has this been deleted for Unity or not? Yeah. So 190 plus is interesting. If we have done some leveling, but if you've never done any leveling, it's our first character, the discovery phase remains there. All of the game is yours to discover. Yes, but if you're a new player, you have a new character, you don't go towards parlor because you don't know what it is. You don't have the uh, cameras to pay for it. As if, we you know, those who will, uh, the credit card and 200 uh, euros to go and get power level. These are completely different ballparks. As a basic experience, the power leveling arena, you're discovering the game. That is not something that you know about, of course, of course, of course. However, power leveling exists because we know that we have a new player, more, res more recent or uh, older player that arrives cyclically on the game and they just want to go and do the end game stuff. They don't want to redo stuff that they've done in the past. It's something that is complicated, this uh, power leveling notion, because people who power level Go to 200 or the same people who will have to go th by uh, buying the car master gear and then replay the game again because they've recreated the new game and got power leveled they don't have any items they don't have any cameras mm. yeah they don't know the game and the people who um, do the power level it's not a secret to anyone they resell the cameras this is what's terrible never will we be able to do enough education to make this understood. People who pass their... Uh... He's talking about a game. Uh, a guy who sells who sells bikes, repaints them and resells them to the same guy. So power leveling and buying cameras are the same exact thing. So you don't have any cameras, so you go and buy cameras to power level and the guy who power levels you, who re who power levels you will sell those cameras to you again so you can buy your so you're just someone that is being paying hundreds maybe thousands of euros sometimes astronomical do you have a visual on this yeah we have a visual on the monetary base that evolves in games and yes sometimes i see we ban every now and then but i see I see 150 million pass between one item to the other. We know the websites, we know the exchange rate. And when I see sums like that, I'm like, the person who has just bought those cameras has been scammed. And then it's going to go back to be row sold again to the same person. And it's just so silly. It's staggering. And the people who do this will stop after a few weeks because they realize they don't know how to play the game to come back six months so it's just so tedious so painful and so sad for us to watch from a distance so for you power leveling on on top of everything that we've mentioned the uh, illegal stuff that is happening here you're just thinking about um, bringing more dynamism to the game i'm not okay with it even with the illegal I'm okay with it without the illegal stuff. I have to specify this. No, 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 no. Everything that is bots, cheaters, those will get their bans. They'll eat it. There's no problem. Buying, selling cameras goes banned straight. No, not thinking about that. Um, more so power leveling on any MMORPG that has lived as long as it has. It makes sense. It's logical. It's absolutely logical and unavoidable. Imagine if we do... Um, for five euros to ten euros go to level two hold on i didn't <clears throat> so if we add a product in our shop you arrive in the game and uh, i'm just saying whatever here right level 180 for five euros or level 200 for 20 euros would you buy that the power level in notion comes here because you just want a character at that level what world of warcraft ff14 and pretty much most of the other mmo concurrents on the scene mmo scene what they do is, most of the gamers that come back on expansion pack, you have to put 60, 70 euros to have one season, to have 60, 70 character for 80. So you sort of have, uh, as an irregular player that comes back, you have to pay to get back to where you were. But it makes it really complicated because if we do this, it's admit that the whole leveling adventure of leveling your character and stuff like that is not really interesting. 
so there should be uh, packs that would make sense if we were to offer something like this. We don't have new content for uh, Endgame, but power leveling needs real solutions. And you can see that we're not really seeking money and stuff like that, but we don't want... We could possibly look into someone, into bringing you the ability to go to level 190 or something like that. Uh, but you have to have some um, uh, progress done on your accounts. There's a formula to be found here. If you put, he's saying, if you put conditions, if you already have a level 200 account, easy. They would just go and buy accounts online and then it wouldn't solve the illegal side of it. It's, there's always avenues to go around it, but it stays less violent than every six weeks, come back, buy from the same guy who powers level you and then buy cameras again from him to buy gear. I'm not saying this is something that will appear in the next few months or weeks. I'm just sharing the reflection that I have about how my understanding of power leveling, if we were to fix this, this is what we have to understand. What we want if for you to not go to the black economy. Here, we're only talking about power leveling and the market, dark black markets in the background. You shouldn't... We uh, This is... We haven't even started looking at what the, the activities that are financed by this this whole black economy. Um, we I, I'm willing to bet that a big portion of the money that is managed, um, that is generated through these uh, avenues, go towards mafias, uh, terrorism, and here we go into much, much heavier topics, and we're fully aware of stuff like that. Let's go back on a different topic. Uh, bringing back rare drop to boost economy and stuff like that bringing back the whole uh yeah we've talked we talk very often to the team about this uh, game development side and the idea is doing its own growing up and it's expanding we're testing a very early formula type on the gladiator tool while now it's still just cosmetics it's a uh, a pet. Oh, I didn't know if it was announced or not. Leak, 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 leak. He just leaked something. <laughs> so cosmetics, I must say, cosmetics. <clears throat> that it will be incredibly ra rare to obtain. Yeah, yeah. He's ad he's admitting that after two and a half hours of talking, it's normal that. <clears throat> It's a formula that is making its way back within the team and making dro rare drops part of the game is something that should happen and we like the idea. Well, bringing the old schemes that we've had up to 129, we're not really sure about that, they're really, really, really low. They were too hardcore for most players and to have to invest 100, 150 hours of gameplay just to get one item. I'm not sure that it's the formula that we want, the most adapted formula to the current gaming market. Ah, you say that, however, but you've brought back the convention item as rare drops, linked to the account, so there's no economy around it. People will not search them and sell them, but you've said that this one was more rare than a Volbis of the time, but so it is something where you have to invest so much time in order to get it. Yeah, but it's just cosmetics. It's not necessary to enhance or better your character to gain power. So really, if it, if sometime, someone really wants to do 150,000, some level 200 bots just to get the uh, cosmetic, it's okay. It's okay. <clears throat> but the worry that we had in the past, I say worry, but it wasn't even a worry. It depends on uh, the t time you have to invest in the game and the understanding you have if we put really high or end game items that require and i say 150 hours it could be three four times that hours of the game to obtain it would demoralize a vast majority of players i see that we've only got 20 minutes left from my side so let's hit the next ones is a 20th class expected for the 20 years the 20 years anyway are consumed they're gone is it expected to revalue doubles, which are useful only to get achievement? No, not now. The secondary healing bonus that was revamped during the any is it possible to review the agility that gives you superior advantage to others? 
Yeah, this is something I'd really like to change. There's there's a vast uh, lack of balance between uh, elements. So agility is clearly superior to others. But yeah, I'd love to go back and rework on those. This I have seen multiple times since the start of the live. Uh, is the ochre dofus? Are you is is it okay? Or are you trying to make it more accessible in the future? I know there are modifications, game design style, but I don't know when we're going to go back over those and impact them. Will we be able to get some uh, community event into server like the Clash of Guilds that we've seen in the past and the Olympia, the, some events I don't even remember. Another spoil, oh yes, but we are working on a formula for next year. It's not necessarily into server, it's not completely into server, but we're working on something for the PVM event next year. A question uh, in July that has uh, that bugged us a lot during the 20 year uh, event the bar guy he asks how many primordial dofus and the answer is nine what the hell are the other three dude what is going on I will not answer to this question is it just six inverted because we are in the upside down world and it's just six but that is inverted to look at nine <gasps> One more question. I will not answer this question. Right, next question. Why is communication so complex uh, with Ankama? Why are there many on Twitter and the forum, but never in the game directly, for example? This is part of the bad habits that we have. You have to understand, communication-wise, is that... I don't know how to say this, but the community expects that, that we communicate uh, every time... Uh, in a transparent manner on everything that we do. I was here back when Todd and the uh, team were talking so transparently at the start of the topic uh, on the forum. The Todd and team were so transparent. Um, all the time that I spend myself answering, doing this FAQ uh, on the forums answering questions. We're nearly, we're nearly approaching three hours or two hours here of forums answering questions. This is time that I'm not spending with my production team, managing problems, uh, talking about uh, spending on new concepts, doing planning for next year. So here we have a high demand for communication, but we don't necessarily have real means and resources to communicate on everything at all times on all topics. So... We're sort of dragging our heels on some topics, something like that. But we do have... Uh, we, I've seen the question that we don't have people to do this. We do have teams, but just to manage all the different announcers that... We, the shops, Dofus, Dofus 2, Retro, Wakfu, the Beta, the Convention. There's so much happening. There's full-time jobs that are already being done. Whether it be for French or internationals. We have people that are uniquely dedicated to the communication cell within a camera. All these people don't have, not necessarily have all the knowledge and all the knowledge to answer every single question and give you the exact answers at that time. So what happens production side is not necessarily transmitted to the whole teams. So it's really complicated to give all the information to everyone at the same level on top of their job and problems they have to solve and things like that for them to communicate. So it makes it so that communicate on an MMO is not really uh, evident. Especially when you're trying to keep a strong link with the community. Honestly, honestly, it's not to say that we're doing it better than everybody else, but to be, um, I'm a player of other games and I know that there are very few companies that manage a strong link with their community as we do um, just to maintain this link with the community i'm not saying we're the best or that nobody else is doing it, but we're taking production time to exchange with you on forums and things like that it's less the case with others so i'm not saying we're not doing it in a perfect way or that we can't get better there's always rooms and avenues for improvement 
but I'm presenting to you the willingness to exchange with you, to communicate, and I hope that 2025 will be better than we've done in 2024. This was one of the last questions. We have 10, 10, 15 minutes. We could do a little, uh, we could do a little Q and A. The Temporis question was the first one. A next Temporis. Yes. I could say 2025 towards the end of the year, but yes, Temporis, we really want to bring you one. But I can't leak, not even a beginning of a concept because there is none, I don't have any. I think 2025 would be a good gift to give you because we didn't have, it has been a while that we haven't had a uh, retro Temporis on the office. But I can't even leak an ounce of concept because we haven't even started t thinking about it. I've seen a question about the new dimension that you've already spoiled. Tot, in the uh, Luna um, documentary, he said that it would be under the sign or symbol of awesome order. Is it true? It would be really, really cool to have a global theme on Kama side. Uh, you're avoiding the answer here. I'm saying if uh, next year it's an awesome modus uh, temporis, then it would be cool to have a new Divan, Div Divan Dimension. If you see a question that you like, just pick it up and answer it. There's one thing on which I can begin an announcement, something that is we're, we're working on internally. It will arrive when it arrives, but I'm hoping for October or November. We are trying to limit. Um, ooh, we're trying to limit buying in all greens as long as you have not bought anything from the shop. Right now, you can buy all greens without buy, buy, buying anything in the game. So you can ban bots. They just come back with a new account with a thousand one hundred egg all greens bot with cameras, and they just P two P and uh, start playing. So we're going to try and bring a limitation to this so that you're not able to buy cameras or all greens before you have spent real money on the shop. We spoke about professions earlier. Will professions be linked to the account instead of the character? Here again. Here again. We want to do differentiation account and server. Server. Yeah, it's something that we'd love to do because we're sick of having to redo the... Uh, uh, yeah, we don't want you to re-level uh, 100 your um, farmer because you're doing quests on a separate account. Uh, so this is something that we want to link. We want your professions to be linked. Not linked to an account, but we want it to be linked to the whole server. So it would be something cool. Here I'm seeing another question, it's maybe a PvP question. Is it expected to have multiple... Uh, oh, having them equipped. So, um, Drago Turkeys, Sea Mules and uh, Rhinetals equipped. And then you can switch between them but only be on top of one. I can't really answer this without saying uh, stuff that isn't necessarily true. Uh, I was talking to Lack about this uh, a few months ago, but I can't remember what we've said. Uh, <laughs> no, the uh, island, you know, the uh, Christmas island. Yes, it will be on the new servers. And yes, I've just spoken uh, with a few people on the team. And we want to bring a bit more modifications so that it is, oh, beautiful. For, to celebrate, for it to be at the level of the new uh, server release. So Christmas island has possibilities to get... Kamas and XP that are enormous with repeatable quests. Are you not worried that, that it would bias the new service? Ah, but it's part of it. As I said, it's one of those package of the uh, new server release. We have to take into account everything like that. I'll, I'll do you one more. Almanaxes that you can do, that you can't do. So we have to review all of these things and make sure that give, the game development side... Um, the formulas that are not viable in all cases in 
for the uh, slices of life of an MMO. So there's lots of things to see, Almanac side, um, New Island, all the experience that people will have. We don't want it that from the first days, you only have uh, high level items. Yeah. So yes, we it's part of all these things that we will have to look at game design so that the new release will be banger. I do have a community that is quite a uh, mono account. I've seen one multi account. Uh, well, concerning the hero mode that you, the ergon, the multi accounting ergonomical change in quality of life. Have you started working on them or have you? <clears throat> yeah, it's still coming for October. Woo, with phase three, let's go. As I said, with the hero mode, there's two principal problems for delivery of this project. It is something that is long term in terms of delivery. So we estimate this a one year dev, but when you say one year in our field, it's one and a half, two years in terms of actual final delivery. Delivery. So it's really hard for me to tell you exactly one because it just does not make sense. It, we will not respect that anyway. So now we really want to focus on ergonomical changes. Auto follow, literally follow the uh, leader of the group, join automatically the fight. And Koto proposed this to have auto focus on oh when it's your turn wow when you when your turn starts it just comes up that is stylish that will please a lot of people in the game especially multi encounter it will make it even greater for the hero mode the second problem uh, is um the bias that we have game design side which means it's a better way to play dofus no We've talked about modulation on dungeons. Four accounts is the... Four characters is the best. If you start playing five up to eight, it makes them either easy or incredibly difficult compared to four. Hero mode might bring the same effect on this kind of... Uh, might have the same effect on this kind of problems. It's something that we observe in Wakfu. The best way to play Wakfu is... Mono account is really good. But you can feel that there is a lack. The moment you start doing dungeons and stuff like that, you, ha you, you find yourself needing to be four or six. And then it brings out the difficulty of recruiting and finding other people to do stuff with. One of my biggest worries, Papino, if we bring the hero mode, is that it gives the same bias to Dofus over the long term. Remove Omegas. And ornaments from. <laughs> Omegas, there is a real question that is being posed. One of the problematics there. Here, he's, he's going to share some reflections that he has with the team internally, game development side. Uh, one of the problematics that we have in Dofus is to propose new content and for it to be interesting is the progression that does not exist anymore because level 200 is the maximum level since 20 years. You understand it was level 100 earlier, but yeah. But now we have Omega levels that we sort of let you keep uh, levels. You don't lose them, but you gain some pods and the number goes up. There's a real question that we have right now. Game development is to progress new progressions without necessarily talking about unlocking level 200. But it's a real question. What do we do with Omega levels on the long term? Because right now it blocks every notion of new progression. Uh, going to unlocking level 200 to get to level 210 is good. Proposing a system, personal anecdote. Call of the, uh, call, I've played a lot of Call of Duty. Prestige levels, I've done hundreds of those. Are prestige levels interesting? Well, there's really a lot of uh, a question to be asked here. We have reached a stage where proposing new content, new ways to get better, new sets is really challenging. It's because level 200 does not change because uh, Inky Vale, for example, has to stay in the meta. We can't say every new level that arrives makes everything obsolete in the back. How do you bring new content if there's no progression for players? So yeah, I'm sharing beginnings of reflections and problematics that we really do have internally. For example, if Ghost that had this aura and worked so well, it's because because not many pe people were level 200. Most people were really 
optimization phase, the leveling phase. So the gear that Frygos, that Frygos was bringing was so exotic and so much better for the same level that was coming from uh, historical continents, Ottoman. There was a lot of duo, triple, multi elements, which did not exist at level 190 plus. It made it so desirable. So it's, if Frygos has this aura, it's also because Frygos proposed a progression for players that were a new type of progression, a new balancing, new gear opportunities, which actually is really complicated to bring in Dofus 2, because now we had 15 years of Dofus 2. Yes, it destroyed the Automai gear, but it also destroyed them because it did not unlock new levels, it did not propose new progression that would be more interesting. It always sought to respect the existent, already existing. So now we're sort of back against the wall in terms of balancing. We can't really propose a lot of new gear that does not exist in the game. <sighs> yeah, for me, I'm convinced of this. It, there, there ought to be a step above level 200, 200 new bosses above 200, because we have this impres impression that we're blocked. That's it, there's two gears. And they're both new. It's a real reflection. I'm curious to see what... Uh, I'm curious to see what chat thinks about this. He's reading chat. But it's a, it's a real reflection that we have since the start. New server, old servers. Imagine if we propose new content, but the new content is 150 to 200. When you have your level, uh, characters level 200, it's cool, you'll do it once and that's it. Done. Finish. Done. Inverse, inversely, where it gets really interesting is if you take this into account, we have a community that is 15 years of habits, 15 years that it did not change, 15 years of my gear is still viable, etc, etc. It's really hard. It's really hard. These are discussions that we're having. They're heavy. <clears throat> Breaking level 200, would it be a big change uh, for players? Or it would just be summarized and continue to um, XP and just get better gear for the for that new. There will be a novelty, maybe healthier economically speaking, but yeah, generally speaking. Yep, there's this thing of arriving at an MMO and seeing that there's 250 levels. It's not sexy. The adventure will be lengthy. Maybe it could um, tranched. He played a lot of Destiny. Uh, there's uh, max level and there's E levels. Yep, yeah, yeah, he's okay with it. He's saying there are lots of formulas to make it more interesting. But with the thinking through him, one of the things that he's is finding really interesting, the Pope, is the D lock of the power creep that it gives and the values that you will reach, uh, where at a certain level they become ab abhorrent. Let's say I've got my Sakri, I've got 15,000 HP, and when I hit, I hit minus 8,000 because mobs have billions of HP. It's not really interesting. And limit the values that you unlock, 10, 15 extra levels, it doesn't make it really interesting or... And there's also the formula that Blizzard have picked with Warcraft that is not uninteresting, which is to add the current level tranches downwards, so you always have 10 to 15 levels of extension between every two raids or seasons. And the last point, to limit the power creep. And the last point here is to never make the current content obsolete. Anyway, you see, I've just shared my reflection because, you know, <clears throat> it's a real, real, real big topic and I think it has to do with the future of Dofus. Because it's an MMO that I support well, I love it. I think we'll be still here in 10-15 years if we don't delock levels if we don't propose new progressions what are we doing in 5-10-15 years as a new content that would be interesting without for you to think oh shit it's just the 10th uh, revamp of the uh, whatever area yeah it's true so if in 10-15 years if there's lots of new gear today a dungeon like the four horsemen that is considered difficult won't it be devoid of difficulty and interest which because of the gear evolving over time <clears throat> these are things to evaluate from now because if we never take risks 
and evaluate uh, if we don't take bold risks now that we're going to the new Dofus 3.0 and things like that and when I say now I mean two th next two or three years it would be really complex to progress new progression if we don't push the bar right now as it is anyway it was really cool for you to share this reflection with us because I myself am very okay with it in agreement with it yeah th the reflection is agreeable and good because we share the same opinion but i'd be curious to see um, opposing views uh disagreements and i've seen some uh, comments in the chat but in any case we have to stop here because i have to go and pick up my little uh, one last question bond or brack brack for me no bonta bonta Sorry, I had my rank 9 so I can play my Sacre in 129. Well, it's Brackmar for life. It's out of the question. Never go. Papino, thank you very much for your time. And on top of that, on a day off, 2 hours and 30 of conversation. Thank you ever so much for having played the game. Well, for the, the whole Z event and me, Humility, and the other one, Sapu or Las Baru. Thank you for following us because it was really cool and we forget very often we say when things are wrong but currently at Ankama we think it's, uh, it's quite positive thank you very much we forget to say thank you but here, here's, here's you a lot <laughs> the unity date is the only thing you have not told us yet you've dodged a lot of the questions This is one of the questions that if I spoil, the teams will literally hit me on the head. I don't want to put the teams in hot waters. So we understand. Thank you very much. We wish you a very good evening. And thank you very much for being with us. And speak soon. Bye.